You are listening to Did You Hear? 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 The Johnson County Library Podcast. This is your Library Insider. Hey, everybody. It's Jamal with the Weekly Word. Garrulousness. Given to prosy, rambling, or tedious loquacity. Pointlessly or annoyingly talkative. Hey, welcome to another edition of Did You Hear? I'm Dave Carson, and this is your Library Insider. Today we're talking about summer reading. Now, before you say, hey, I don't have kids, um, you know, this is to give suggestions to the little ones, I'm not going to lie, but it's also a time for you to go down uh, memory lane and think about all those books that made such an impact on you when you were a little squirt. So I want to read you a couple things. Um, One is from the American Library Association. They said that summer reading programs actually began back in 1890 uh, as a way to encourage school children, particularly those in urban areas and not needed for farm work, (laughs) to read during summer vacation and use the library and develop the habit of reading. Uh, Also from the National Education Association, everyone agrees that reading raises achievement and research shows that students who read over the summer gain reading skills while those who do not often slide backward, losing up to two months of what they learned in school. So obviously reading is very, very important. Books make a huge impact on learning, enjoyment of life, just the quality of life. Well, this year's theme, it is imagine your story. And it gives a nod to fairy tales, mythology, and fantasy, but really is open to anything that requires imagination. And I think that's one of the key components of reading is that uh, you fill in everything that the author has given you as instructions to create that mental picture. So here are some things to try to do. Make sure that not just your little ones, but everyone, everyone should read during the summer and develop a a, a love of reading. Also, take advantage of library programs and services. Involve parents and all your family members in summer reading. Help younger patrons to learn uh, how to use the library. Spread the word. Let's all read. So today, we have an exciting summer reading-themed show. Our librarians called in with several suggestions for your little ones. Also, we ask you to submit your favorite childhood titles on Facebook. We'll mention some of those, but uh, please know that we also took all those titles that you uh, submitted And um, whether we mention it or not in the podcast, we're putting it into a book list and it is available in the show notes. Now, before we launch into all of that, Melissa Horak Hearn is back and she and I remember our top five childhood books. So let's get right to it. Hey, Melissa, how are you? Dave, how are you doing, man? Oh, I'm doing all right. It's been a long time since um, I've heard from you or our listeners have heard from you. I haven't gotten to talk to you guys in ages, and it's been even longer since we've gotten to be in the same room to laugh at each other's mistakes. That's a um, bummer. Despite, uh, you know, these unusual circumstances, are you having a pretty good summer? I am. I'm having a surprisingly good summer. It's nice to have an excuse to be stuck with my kid all the time because he's at a fun age. And um, I'm able to do a lot of the work that I hadn't been able to do when we were in branches. So it's actually been a good productive summer so far. Very good. I have no reason to go outside into the humidity. So I've been a happy (laughs) summer. I see. Have you uh, had a chance to do any any reading? I have had a chance to do quite a bit of reading, but I don't want to talk about what I've read this summer. That's okay. But Can we, we talk about to something talk. totally different? Uh, what Can we talk, talk about, about what summer I like... reading today? Yeah, I want to talk about what I liked to read in the summer when I was a kid. Can we do that instead? Yeah. <laughs> awesome. 
You, you know what? So here's the thing. I ask our youth services librarians to call my desk phone and leave messages with their favorite uh, summer reading recommendations for the little ones, right? And that got me to thinking, you know, it's like, that's a great question for everyone who's ever been a reader. And so I also threw that out to our Facebook crowd. And um, we'll get into some of their answers in a little bit as well. And I do want to tell everyone that that will be a book list in our catalog. So you can click through and see all those user uh, submitted uh, choices for summer reading. But, you know, when I think about my childhood uh, and putting together a top five of, of books that were really memorable, you know, that really stood out, had an impact on me. It wasn't that hard to do. How about you? Did you do this exercise? Oh, yeah. I had five within about five seconds. And I knew exactly, like, every title brought me back to a specific, like, picture flash, an image of my childhood. So I knew that I had hit the right ones. Yeah. And I, I realized I still have all but one of them. And it made me want to oh, go really? and find the other one. That's funny. One of mine, um, I, I looked up and uh, it is still available um, through Amazon. It's out of print, though, and you can only get it for eight hundred dollars. Oh so Lord. we're not, <laughs> not going to get that of, one and put it back on my shelf. But. One of mine was written in the 1880s and it's still in print. Wow. That is so right? cool. Yeah, what? it's called Five Little Peppers and How They Grew. And <laughs> it's, about, it's about a family who, um, this family of five children who was born into abject poverty in this little brown house. And this rich person takes interest in their little family and helps them, helps them achieve what they, you know, helps them achieve their potential. I guess it's a series and I only read that first one because I read it. It was the only book that I could find for kids, like any way, shape or form for kids at my grandma's house the summer that I had chicken pots. So oh. I read that thing like 16 times, but wow. just that one. So I don't know what happened to him after the person took interest in him. Yeah. Well, who, who do you think we should, uh, who should go first with the, the list? Do you, should we flip a coin? Well, I just gave one of mine. Well, so now I give your... one. Well, should should I do the whole list or just give one? Let's take turns. Go ahead and give one. Okay. Well, before I jump into my list, oh, no. an honorable mention to Dr. Seuss. All Dr. Seuss books. Um, you know, it, it, it's so funny what an impression Dr. Seuss made on me as a kid because when um, – my parents were, you know, asking me, it's like, so what do you think, how do you think your, your body works? How do you think your heart works? And, and, you know, your lungs, how do you breathe and all this? And in my mind, I saw all these little Dr. Seuss characters with big hair, you know, working cranks and levers and pulleys <laughs> until, you know, my parents said, I oh, should probably show them like a medical book. <laughs> You know, with some diagrams. And That's actually cool. kind of distressing. <laughs> oh, so, so that's my I'm, honorable I'm mention. Honestly, I'm not a Dr. Seuss fan, so it, it is kind of traumatizing me a little. Ah. Uh, yeah. Okay. So um, here are my top five. So right. starting with number five, it's not a single book. It's the World Book Encyclopedia. And I, I just loved opening up and, you know, you, you had sociology, you had science, you had history. I mean, it was everything and you could just create your own adventure. And um, it was so strange, you know, what letter you would choose and just go on an adventure. Um, a, a note about that, if kids want to go online right now, they could go to jocolibrary.org uh, and go to the kids section Find the homework help button, and you'll find a page with access to Encyclopedia Britannica Library Edition, Funk and Waggle's new uh, World Encyclopedia, and Culturegrams. So, how great is that? 
that's almost like having an old school encyclopedia in your house. <laughs> so number no, five for me. Funny that number you can say something about choosing an adventure because that is actually my series of choice that made oh, loved those books when I was love, a kid. Love, love those books. And they've started reprinting some of the old classics and they started writing new ones. That's Although great. I noticed that they put a map on the back of it and that kind of ticks me off because it should be completely thrown to the wind. You should have to put like six fingers into that book to hold your places so that if you die, you can go back. Huh. I've, I've noticed that some of the uh, streaming videos uh, these days uh, are having kind of choose your own adventure and I, it just doesn't work for me. You know, they don't really yeah. pull it off. Yeah. So what's your number five? Um, let's see. So I said five little peppers and how they grew. And then the um, choose your own adventure books. Okay. So I've, I've got three left, right? Oh, okay. So why don't I jump to my number four? Yeah. This is the one that I had to do a little research to find out what it was called. Because I remember that there was a, a, a little girl that went to the park and um, there's this pond, and she sets up all her stuffed animals who are her friends, and they put a little sail into a walnut, and she pushes it out to, uh, you know, uh, go for go for a sail. And um, across the pond, there are all these boys, and they have a big fancy boat, and they kind of tease her and make fun of her little walnut boat. But then through the power of imagination, all of her animals transform into her crew and the walnut turns into this giant ship and they go to battle with <laughs> the boys across the park and uh, it's called the USS Walnut. So anyways, the name of the book is Pirates in the Park by Tom Roberts and it was illustrated by Harold Burson. That's the one that uh, is no longer in print. But if somebody wants to buy me that, it's only eight hundred dollars on amazon.com i totally remember that book man do you i have read what? that book <laughs> i thought awesome. it was so cool yeah mm. yeah i remember well, my the uss walnut um and i tried I'll to jump... walnut shell boats and they sank oh geez yeah so sorry to burst your bubble of childhood there buddy <laughs> <laughs> so uh, how about I uh, give you my number three since it's really short and then we'll jump to yours. Yeah. So my number three is Julius by Sid Hoff. And I can't tell you what attracted me to that book, but I read it over and over and over and over and over again. And it, maybe it's just being a little kid and having a giant ape as a friend. It could take you anywhere. There's, there's, there's something powerful about that. You know what? I would like a giant ape to be my friend today. That's pretty deep, man. I don't really know what it says. I don't know that it I is. I think it's... <laughs> oh, so what's your number three? All right. My number three is a book about a girl who um, lives in the Caribbean. And she, her mama makes brooms. And um, this old man tells her to use her imagination for some reason. I don't remember like the whole storyline of the book. I actually had to look this one up, but it's why I, I like green apple um, jelly ranchers. They, she gets this piece of candy. Like when she helps her mom, she gets this piece of candy that the way she describes it, like that's, that's the connection that I made. So it's green apple jelly ranchers. Um, and the book is called Josephine's Imagination. And like, I, I don't know anybody else who's ever read it or remembers it, but it's just phenomenal. Like the artwork in it is really sweet. And the girl makes these little dolls out of brooms. Like her mom makes these traditional whisk brooms and sells them at a market. And Josephine makes these cute little dolls with the broken ones and puts little happy faces on them and earns candy. It's nice. That's really great. Yeah. Well, my number two, uh, you know, 
it's a great book and I love it, but I'm, I'm sure there might be some people like, well, that's kind of an obvious choice, but it's so great. I mean, the fact that Maurice Sendak uh, not only wrote, but illustrated where the wild things are. Um, you know what? Reality check here. Did he illustrate it? I, he did, right? I think so. Okay. <laughs> Gosh, I would hate to put f- false information about there, out there, but I just loved that book. I just thought the artwork was so unique and such a fun story. I love that one. Yeah. What's your number two? My number two is also a very unique, um, has very unique artwork and a very unique perspective. And it's A Snowy Day by Ezra Jack Keats. I love that book. Like to this day, I, that's one of my very favorite books. Yeah, I think I remember that one. Yeah, I like the part where Peter walks with his toes in and walks with his toes out and crunches across the snow. I love that book. Very good. So my my number one favorite book from childhood. The the here's a little context. Um, so I would sit on one side of my grandmother and my sister would sit on the other side of my grandma and we'd be sitting in the back of this uh, Winnebago Brave camper. And we went out every summer as a kid and we traveled 48 of uh, you know, the United States minus Hawaii and Alaska just driving all over the country in this thing in the 70s. And she read us a lot of books. But the one book that just I couldn't get over, I had to just open it over and over and over again uh, to see the artwork, was Busy, Busy World by Richard Scarry. And yes. uh, again, he he's a illustrator and author. But what's so cool is, you know, all, all the people in his books are animals. And so you've got, you know, little pigs and and dogs and cats and they, you know, cats dressed as policemen. And um, anyways, it what I found fascinating was it was my, uh, uh, you know, introduction to uh, geography and to culture and to diversity. And um, I just thought it was so cool because... You know, I I obviously knew that the cats and the dogs were not real people, but I knew that they represented these different parts of the world, and I just wanted to learn more and more about our world. And so thank you, Richard Scarry. So what is your number one? Excellent. Excellent choice on that one. Thank you. My number one is um, like an English lit textbook that I found, I think probably at a garage sale when I was a kid, it's called Roads to Everywhere. And it's just all of these short stories, like not written by anybody in particular that I can remember. But there's this one that has a description of a cave, like a pink granite cave. And the description of exploring that cave just still stands out to me as such a, like a beautiful, my 10th grade English teacher would go on and on about showing and not telling. And that author, yeah. whoever it was, had a gift for showing and not telling what those kids were seeing in that cave. It was just remarkable. And I noticed Neat. that I still have that book. It's on my shelf downstairs right now. Well, you know, I was talking to my sister about uh, this idea of putting together a list of five. And she she was thinking, you know, um, she has three kids and so uh, they're all grown up now, but it's like, you know, th- that's so much more recent to her than back to her childhood. So she was recommending some books. I'll go ahead and give you what she, she suggested. My sister's name's Nancy and uh, The Lorax by Dr. Seuss. Frog and Toad are Friends yes. by uh, Arnold Lobel. And then, uh... oh, these, these are her fi- favorite from her childhood. Okay. And um, uh, Little Little House on the Prairie, Laura Ingalls Wilder. She was big into all those books. She just loved them. 
And then her number one was uh, Where the Wild Things Are by Maurice Sendak. So we have that in common. Um, has a good taste. Then she had a, a, a bonus book because she can't limit people to five. Uh, Bridge to Terab- Terabithia by uh, Catherine Peterson. Beautiful. Um, but her kids were really into Streganona by yes. Tommy de Paola. Yeah. Tommy de um, Tommy de Paola. Um, let's see. Papa, please Paolo. don't go. <laughs> Wait. Pa- Papa, please get the moon for me by Eric Carley. Um, I Feel Silly and Other Moods That Make My Day by Jamie Lee Curtis. Um, Alexander and the Terrible, Horrible, No Good, Very Bad Day by Judith Viorst. Yeah, that's my number one. Oh, is it? Okay. All right. Um, my Many Colored Days by Dr. Seuss. And uh, one more honorable mention, and that is uh, Anna Dudney's Llama Llama series. Do you know that one? I do. I do. I don't. What, tell me about it, or if you remember it. I mean, hate to put you on the spot. It's very um, sing-song rhymey, and uh-huh. the central character is Lama Lama, and he is a preschooler who has a bunch of other animal friends, and um, there's a time when he gets mad at Mama. Lama Lama gets mad at Mama, and there's a book about that, and there's a book about Lama Lama's red pajamas. And we have one here at my house um, that is Llama Llama, like, I don't remember. It's obviously Llama Llama something. But um, Llama Llama meets a bully goat. I think it's Llama Llama and the bully goat or something like that. And there's a goat at his school who is really unkind. He has to deal with that. Interesting. Yeah, exciting stuff. I'll have to ask my son what his top five would be. He's seven. Yeah, do and, he has and really good taste in books. Yeah, and and I might mention when this podcast comes uh, out, if you stumble across it on uh, Facebook, that'd be a good place to respond in the comments with any books that uh, you uh, uh, suggest, because. All of these titles, the goal is to pass these along to all the parents out there with little ones that want really good suggestions for for books. Hey, we're going to give you a lot in this episode, and I feel like we already have. Yeah. We listed some really good ones because we have excellent taste, too. Yeah, (laughs) absolutely. I hope so. Um, So as I mentioned, we threw this question out to our Facebook crowd, and uh, Sarah suggests uh, Mils, uh, Miss Nelson's Gone Missing. I love um, that book. <laughs> do you? Yes. Uh, Peggy suggests Make Way for Ducklings and Blueberries for Sal. Also very both of, solid. Both of those are from uh, Robert McCloskey. Yes. Um, Elise suggests The Caterpillar and the Pollywog. The Rainbow Fish and the Treasure Tree. I'm not familiar with those. I know Rainbow Fish. Nice. I see someone, uh, let's see, uh, named Julia likes the same book I do. Uh, Richard Scarry's uh, Busy Busy. Oh, Busy Busy Town. Oh, not Busy Busy World. Busy Busy. Yeah. There's a lot of Busy Busy books from, from Mr. Scarry. There are. I like the one that's about going to the airport. And there's a flying bratwurst. (laughs) Yeah. Very creative. I love the artwork. (laughs) It's much fun. And a pickle car. I think that the pickle car is my favorite thing in in that entire canon. So we have a lot of people suggesting the book Corduroy. Oh, yes. Corduroy is wonderful. And I see, uh, I recognize a... Danny, Danny and the Dinosaur. That's another uh, Sid Hoff book. Yes. Um, several Dr. Seuss books. Um, the Velveteen Rabbit. Um, Skippy John. I don't know Skippy John. 
to be John Jones, I think is the full name of that character. Um, and then uh, one of our library fan, friends, Melody, uh, suggests uh, Banicula. So I'm guessing that's uh, a buddy that's a vampire, that's a Dracula bun bunny? <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> That's fantastic. Yes. I love it. Yes. <laughs> uh, our friend Sarah, we like kindergarten. And you know what? I like kindergarten too. There's, I, I miss, I yearn for the days for the carpet square where we'd take a nap. Who, who does that anymore? I don't even know that In, kindergartners. Yeah, because I had half day kindergarten because. Well, I had half day kindergarten, but they still had us take a nap. Y'all were soft. Yeah. And then we'd have like uh, a parent's shirt that we would wear backwards as our painting smock. Absolutely. Yeah. Let's see. Uh, Jennifer suggests, I've got rocks in my socks, said the ox to the fox. That's got to be Dr. I hope they weren't on a hike. <laughs> yeah. Uh, a lot of folks, frog, frog and toad. Oh, here's a good one. The monster at the end of this book. Yes. Yeah. So anyways, th this list, uh, there's there's more. And it's gold. And we thank you to all the folks from Facebook that submitted these. These will become a uh, book list within our catalog that will be clickable. And you can go and reserve every single one of those books. And if you look at the show notes to this very episode, that's how you can access that. Does that sound good? Sounds great. Okay. So with that said, we've only got one segment left in this show. And our librarians called in and left their summer reading suggestions. What do you say we get to them right now? Hey, this is Emily from Monticello Library. I suggest you watch Just Mercy. You can stream it for free right now through Amazon Prime or get it at the library. Hi, this is Lisa Nason, and I'm a Youth Services Specialist at Blue Valley. The book I would like to recommend is Glitch by Laura Martin. Glitch is an action-packed, fast-paced, time-travel story that does an incredible job of mixing science fiction, historical fiction, and mystery. Here's what the book flap has to say. Reagan Fitz and Elliot Mason have been enemies since they started training to become glitchers, people who travel through time to preserve important historical events. But everything changes when they find a letter from Reagan's future self warning them about an impending disaster that threatens them and everyone they know. Will they be able to set aside their past in order to save the future? This book is recommended for kids 10 and up, and it would also make a great read aloud, which was just published at the beginning of June. So the hardcover copy is still on order, but you can place a hold now for when the book is available or there is an ebook version available for checkout now. Thanks and have a great summer. Hi, my name is Angelica Vive and I work at the Oak Park Library as a children's librarian. I am excited about the theme of summer reading this year, Imagine Your Story, with a focus on fantasy, myth, and folklore. Have you seen the Johnson County Library summer reading logo? It's on the library website. It's pretty cool. There is a dragon on it. Wouldn't you agree that dragons have a certain magnetism attracting readers of, all, of different ages? What is about dragons that makes them so appealing? I guess it depends. I just finished listening to and reading a book titled Dragons in a Bag and its sequel, The Dragon Thief by Zeta Elliott. Both books are available in the print format and as e-audiobooks. Jackson, their protagonist, is a likable nine-year-old boy who lives in Brooklyn. Due to a sequence of improbable events, 
Jackson gets a hold of three baby dragons. He has a responsibility of delivering them to someone, but can he do it? Dragons in the Bag is a fast-paced and character-driven story. While the setting is as realistic as can be, it's Brooklyn. The events that unfold are mysterious and magical. In addition to the rapidly growing baby dragons, there is a very determined talking squirrel, a cool talking rat, live dinosaurs, a grumpy witch, a special agent fairy named Jeff, and a mean villain named Blue. There are two worlds, the everyday world we know, the real world, and the realm of magic. And there is Jackson and his friends caught in between the two worlds. In her two books, Zeta Elliott, the author, former Brooklyner herself, depicts racially diverse kids and adults. She gives you, a reader, an idea that what we need is to not just rely on magic to solve the problems of the real world, but to do something to improve the world and strike a golden medium between the beauty of the real world and the wonder of the magic realm. Dragons in a Bag and its sequel, The Dragon Thief, are hopeful and heartwarming tales. They will swiftly carry you through the suspense of events, yet will inspire you to reflect on issues of diversity and justice, which are quite relevant these days. Both books are hugely compelling and satisfying listening or reading experience. Hi. This is Emily from Monticello Library. I suggest you read Jacqueline Woodson. She's a black author who has picture books, kids books, teen books, and adult books. My favorite is If You Come Softly. Hey, everybody. This is Melanie Semler. I'm the elementary coordinating librarian for the Johnson County Library, and I'm excited to recommend some books for you this summer. Um, The books I'm going to recommend are by one of my very favorite authors ever, and that is Jacqueline Woodson. And the book I'm going to highlight today is Brown Girl Rising. Um, In the book Brown Girl Rising, Jacqueline tells the story of her childhood, not only through the civil rights movement, but also as a black family growing up in the South. And so through her aspirations to become a writer, she considers her writing dreams. Hey, Dave, this is Beth from Central Youth Services, so children's area. Um, A book that I really enjoyed is called 100 Days of Happiness by Brizzy. And the quote that I keep remembering is, the important thing is that when death comes, it finds us still alive. I think that's particularly important with the pandemic. Thanks. Bye. Hey, Dave. This is Becky Carlton, uh, Youth Services Specialist over at the Oak Park Library. And uh, I'm also doing online story times this summer on Facebook. And I wanted to tell you about my favorite book so far this summer, which is in our teen fiction section. It's the... Hunger Games prequel by Suzanne Collins called The Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes. And her superb plotting and pacing and nods to literary illusion and just the fascinating way that she addresses complex philosophical themes, all while juggling protagonists Coriolana Snow's moral ambivalence makes this such a worthy prequel to the Amazing Hunger Games trilogy. So watch out, though, just when you start to sympathize with Snow, who is a teenager in this novel, ugh. <laughs> he he definitely lets you down. So uh, this one makes you think. It's a really hard book, but it's it's good, and I think any book discussion group would really like to savor the meaty discussion about the nature of humanity. So I highly recommend it for teens and adults that like the Hunger Games trilogy. Thanks. Bye. Hi, this is Tiffany, and I'm a youth information specialist at Blue Valley. And for this summer, I recommend the System Divine trilogy. It is Lamez meets the Lunar Chronicles. Uh, it's YA. And the first book is called The Sky Without Stars. That's been very out. And the second one is Between Burning Worlds, also very awesome. And it has just come out. 
And if you read both of those, then you'll be prepped and ready for when the third book of the trilogy comes out next year. Um, it's a super fun epic space saga um, with traitors and love and all sorts of awesome stuff. So I highly recommend if you like epic sci-fi. Thanks. Bye. Hi, this is Jim. I'm the Youth Services Librarian from Gardner, Edgerton, and Spring Hill. Summer reading just started, but I'm not kicking off my summer with a fairy tale. Instead, I'm reading a J-fiction book by Kenneth Oppel called Bloom. It's about mysterious black plants that start popping up all over the world. If you like a fast-paced mystery with some science fiction thrown in, you might check out this book, too. For more episodes of Did You Hear?, go to the Johnson County Library website, jocolibrary.org slash didyouhear. Please, stay safe, everyone.